station. This is the Weather Channel. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. We're ready for your questions. Excellent. Here we go. Well, a special treat for you right now. Joining us from the International Space Station are engineers Tracy Caldwell Dyson and Doug Wheelock. Both of you, thanks for joining us. I've got to ask you, we've been watching down here on Earth, the tropics so active. What's the view like from the International Space Station? I'll tell you, the view's uh, spectacular. Um, and uh, I think Wheels has been watching it this morning. He probably has uh, more descriptive words. Well, uh, this morning we actually flew between uh, Julia and Igor uh, coming up through the Ad Atlantic, and it was uh, just uh, spectacular. Uh, looked out either side of the cupola windows, and um, of course you could tell the rel relative size. Uh, you could tell which one was Igor. And um, uh, it's just really, really dramatic. It's, uh, yesterday we had, uh, we had a pass directly over Igor, and um, I almost... Uh, let go of my camera as uh, so uh, my breath was taken looking into the eye of the of the storm it just looked like a waterfall going in uh, down through the eye we could see the atlantic uh, clearly uh, through the eye of the storm it was uh, just absolutely stunning Have either of you ever seen images like that before Actually, on my uh, previous flight, STS-118, we actually, our mission was cut short by Hurricane Dean. And while we were in orbit, uh, we flew right over the eye of the hurricane and saw the same image that uh, Doug is describing to you um, right down the center of the eye. And it almost looks very, very calm compared to what it must be like on the ground. And for, for me, uh, that was the first time really, I mean, this vantage point is, it, it's so surreal when you're looking down through it, because like Tracy had mentioned, it looks so peaceful and so calm and it's so beautiful, the spiral bands and everything. Uh, and then you look down and just sort of uh, project yourself to being below those clouds and, and you can only imagine what chaos and torment is uh, going on underneath those, uh, those clouds. And so it's a, it's a pretty surreal experience. Now, Tracy, we know that you'll be returning home soon. How closely do you monitor the weather, and do you think that the tropics will have any impact on your return flight? You know, I know there's a lot of folks back home that are preparing for my return, um, and uh, I have to trust that they're looking out for those kinds of things. And um, I'd have to say that uh, um, the weather in Kazakhstan is probably a lot clearer than it is uh, en route to Houston. but. Um, I, I trust that the folks that are picking me up are the ones that are uh, looking out for that. Uh, Tracy, I'm going to ask you, uh, specifically since you're returning home in just a, really a matter of hours, what's it going to be like your last, uh, your last day on the space station? Oh, I, uh, I fear it's going to be a little emotional. Um, this is such an incredible uh, vehicle that we have that doesn't even come close to stating uh, what a work of art this is. Um, to be a part of something like this that's so enormous, um, the, only, uh, the only venture of its kind, and the fact that it was put together, designed, and run by all of our international partners is uh, something, uh, I don't know, huge. It's bigger than I am. And to be engulfed by something like that, uh, it's, it's hard to let go of. So I imagine it's going to be a little emotional. Doug, for you, we know that the NASA program is changing direction a little bit. We know that the shuttle program is not going to be um, going any further. What are your thoughts on the future of NASA? Well, it, uh, I, my thoughts as I, as, I, as I look ahead for our, our kids and our grandkids uh, to what we'll see in the next 50 years, um, NASA has never seemed to disappoint. You know, when we, when we get at a crossroads, uh, when we're between programs or are uh, uh, designing a new, a new vision to explore uh, maybe a little further out, um, you know, there is a, there is a point of, of where will we go next, what will we do next. And, um, and I, I think over the next couple of years, as we see a lot of return on science that we're doing, beginning to really start to do 100% now on the space station, and we, we understand how to bring these things back, how to make life better on Earth, 
and and through that research, how to um, how to better optimize projecting ourselves further into this out into the solar system, and uh, maybe back to the moon, maybe to Mars. Um, it's very very exciting, uh, just just the unknown and and. Uh, and how NASA is going to respond to that in, in our in our future vision, and it's I know it's going to be spectacular. It's never it's never disappointed us as we as we came out of the Apollo program and we wondered well what, what next, and then uh, the shuttle program was only just a dream at that point, and um, and an impossible dream at that, and uh, and now here we find ourselves in the uh, in the in the twilight of the shuttle era, and we're looking at the space station. Uh, to be a platform to uh, help us in research and uh, develop new materials and uh, develop new uh, ways uh, in, in propulsion to try to take us deeper and further. And I think our kids and our grandkids are gonna are in for a, uh, just a, a thrilling and fascinating future with NASA. So, so I, you know, the change is always is not is not always bad. And so uh, we're certainly uh, sad to see the space shuttle go. It's been a workhorse uh, uh, for the NASA space program. And uh, but uh, but I think there are bigger and better things to come. And uh, and I think it's going to be a very, very exciting future for our kids and our grandkids. The International Space Station is truly international. What's it been like working with your Russian counterparts? I, well, I have to say that um, when I first arrived, we also had um, Suichi on board from Japan and um, also uh, Naoko, who uh, joined us during the STS-131. And um, it has been a, it's been a joy to, to be a truly international crew um, all the way through uh, the time that I've been here. It's, um, it's great. You learn a lot about their culture. You learn a lot about your own. Uh, and the same goes true for your own, your own personality um, and how you uh, how you adapt and incorporate yourself into a new culture. Uh, we've been training and um, uh, being friends uh, with our uh, Russian crewmates uh, well before we arrived on the space station, and it's just been um, it's been I think a warm uh, a warm uh, experience to to live now on board to work together as a team to face these challenges that we have everything from the daily uh, daily schedule to the big things like a pump module failing. Uh, it, it's been uh, a lesson for all of us and a joy and also challenging at times to understand one another, but we always make it work and uh, body language does go a long way as well as uh, hand gestures if uh, we ever get to a point where we don't find the right words. But it's uh, for, for myself, it's been very rewarding. I think we all feel that way. Well, then I have to ask you, you've been on the space station for a while now. Are there any modern conveniences of home that you don't have on the International Space Station that you wish you had? <laughs> uh, there are a lot of those. Um, one is running water. Uh, that's a... That's a uh, I sure, I sure miss. Uh, haven't had a shower since June 15th, and so uh, um, I, I suppose I'm looking forward to that when I come back. I still have a few more months, uh, but uh, uh, we have ways to to uh, to take care of our personal hygiene. But uh, but you, you know, on occasion you do miss uh, some warm water running over your body so you can clean yourself. Uh, so that, that's probably the number one modern convenience that I that I miss. Uh, the, uh, the other the other thing uh, uh, we uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Please continue your thought. Uh, we we were just sort of laughing. Sorry if we threw you for a loop there. But the other thing that we that we really miss that I that I miss, your sense of smell sort of. Uh, sort of fades away a little bit. I think it sort of goes into hibernation and you, because this place is like a laboratory, so everything is pretty sterile and it's uh, it's the smell of machinery running, you know, like uh, computers and things like that. And so I think that, uh, you know, that in turn uh, affects your sense of taste. And so, and so, 
the aromas and things like that. So I, I really miss, and Tracy had just mentioned, you know, the, the smell of fresh coffee and um, also, you know, the, the smell of uh, when you're walking outside of a, a restaurant and you smell the food cooking and, and things like that. Th those are smells that you, uh, they tend to fade into like distant memory when you come here to the space station. Um, one thing that was really neat, we had a, a progress resupply vehicle that docked this past weekend. And um, one of the things on the top, we opened the hatch and we had fresh fruits and vegetables in there. And um, I never dreamed that an apple, like through the skin, could actually smell so good. But uh, but it's it smells that you miss like that. That's really the smell of life, the smell of the earth, you know, uh, that you that you miss as well. And so uh, uh, so that was a real treat, getting some fresh fruit and vegetables. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.